What is up people? DevSage here and in this video I'm going to be teaching you about the method chaining pattern. Um, the method chaining pattern allows you to create a chain of method calls that are linked to one another. Um, if you're familiar with jQuery you've probably already seen method chaining before. For example you might have something like this where you have h1 dot fade out dot fade in um, dot add class or something like that this would be an example of a method chain where you have a method and then another method right after it and then another method right after it um, the benefit of chaining it is that it allows us to perform multiple actions with just one line if jQuery didn't allow chaining, we would have to do something like this h1 dot fade out and then on another line um, h1 dot fade in and then another line we'd have to do h1 dot add class and you you, you get the point. Um, it's it's chaining allows us to use less space and it also allows us to just to use the same reference to an object. In this case, we're just targeting one the 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 h1s one time. Whereas down here on the three separate lines, we have to traverse the DOM three separate times to find all of the h1. It's just a waste of memory. Um so that's the the benefits of chaining. So how do we actually do this? How can we actually implement this? So we're going to set up a scenario. So let's say I want to build a money dispenser. I have a certain amount of cash in my wallet. I'm going to take that amount. I'm going to put it in the money dispenser. And my money dispenser is going to tell me how many of each denomination of dollar bills I will get back. For example, if I said I have $33, my money dispenser is going to give me one $20 bill, one $10 bill, and three $1 bills. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So let's go ahead and create our money dispenser um, class, I guess. So this is going to take in the amount, the initial amount. We're going to say this dot amount equals um, amount. All right. So now we're going to come outside of that and we're going to say money dispenser dot prototype equals an object. And this is going to have one method. So we're going to say compute. That's going to be our method. Uh, it's going to take in the bill denomination. So in the US where I live, we have um, certain bill denominations. We have the $100 bill, the 50, uh, the 20, the 10, the $5 bill and the $1 bill. So that's just that's what the bill denomination argument here is going to represent. Um, so now down here, I guess the first thing we need to do is get the number of bills that fit into uh, the amount. So for this denomination, whether it be 100, 50, 20, we need to figure out how many of those can fit evenly within our current amount. So we need to say const number of bills equals math.floor this dot amount divided by bill denomination. So this gives us the total number of bills that fits into this amount. Um, for example, let's say, uh, uh, let's say my, my, uh, my amount was 33, $33. And my, I was working on the $10 bill denomination. So how many $10 bills can fit in 33? Well, I do this dot amount, which is 33, divided by the denomination, which is 10. 
and this leads to 3.3 but we take the floor of that meaning we take everything to the left of the decimal so that leaves us with three and that's right we have t three ten dollar bills that go into 33 um, okay so now we need to update our amount um, we need to subtract the number of bills times the bill denomination in order to shave off that value from our amount so we need to say this dot amount minus equals the number of bills times the bill denomination so what we're doing we're just taking the current amount and subtracting however many bills of this denomination we're just su subtracting that value so now underneath here we can actually print out some information to our user so we can say uh, console log um, dispensing and we're going to say the number of bills oh actually let's make these back ticks dispensing the number of bills and um the bill denomination bills and then we can also print out the amount we have left so amount left this that amount let's move this over a little bit okay so now we're practically done but we have one more line and this is probably the most important line we're going to return this return this this returns this instance of the money dispenser so that means compute returns money dispenser money dispenser has a method called compute oh I can call compute again oh compute returns money dispenser money dispenser returns compute and you get the point this is where the chaining comes in here we're returning an instance of the money dispenser that we used to call compute in the first place so this allows compute to be recalled over and over so let me uh let me jump into actually uh running this so let's say uh const um dispenser equals new money dispenser and um, let's say we have three hundred and twenty eight dollars in our wallet and so let's say dispenser dot compute and we need to pass in our first denomination so let's say we want to start with a hundred dollar bills so this uh, we're going to compute off of a hundred dollar bills we're going to run it and over here we have dispensing three one hundred dollar bills amount left twenty eight dollars and that makes sense because in three hundred and twenty eight we can only put three hundred dollar bills in it and then we're left with twenty eight dollars left over um yeah so let's try to chain something let's try to chain uh the fifty dollar bill to it so we have dispensing zero fifty dollar bills because 50 can't go into 28 so we can't dispense any $50 bills so we're still left with $28 let's try chaining $20 bills compute 20 okay so we dispensed one $20 bill and we're left with $8 all right so let's try 10 We can't dispense any $10 bills because we only have $8. Let's try five. Okay, we dispensed one $5 bill and we're left with $3. And let's try our $1 bill denomination. And we dispensed three $1 bills and we're left with $0 and that is the method chaining pattern um 
we have our money dispenser and our money dispenser has a method called compute and compute does some calculations and you know prints out some information but then at the end it returns this which is a reference to money dispenser the same money dispenser that called it that way we can actually call compute again because compute just returns a money dispenser and money dispenser has a compute method which returns a money dispenser which has a compute method and it goes over and over it's a chain you can you can chain methods like this by returning an instance of the object that called it and that's pretty much it i hope you have a better understanding of how method chaining works and if you have any questions leave them down in the comments um please subscribe if you haven't hit the notification bell so you can get notified of you know whenever i post a new video i'm trying to post at least twice a week and yeah peace mm -hmm.